Gallery, along with Coco. Uh, and I'm going to be doing one last tour of adaptation, uh, the Red Deer College Visual Arts Students yeah. Annual Exhibition uh, that's coming down tomorrow. Uh, so I'm going to take us a uh, walk through that. I'm just going to give a hand off with the cameraman. Here we go. All right, so I'm just going to take a walk through the gallery. Um, we've done a couple other uh, talks and um, uh, videos and talked about a couple of the other works. So we're going to talk about a few different things this time um, before the exhibition comes down. Got to get control of my camera. There we go. So one thing that's uh, interesting that happened this year um, is we, the students seem to uh, work in a smaller scale as they're often working at home uh, and they were working kind of in their own, you know, kitchens, basements, things like that. So normally what we would have is works about this size, drawings about this size, um, which is about two and a half feet, 32 inches or something like that. Uh, and this one here is what we ended up with this year. It's really interesting uh, as the students ended up working in a tighter, more detailed type of realm. Um, as you can see in these two pieces, this piece here uh, is by Lucas Dreary. Uh, it's, it's titled Final Bastion. Uh, and then this piece over here is a torso study uh, by Casey Dolan. We did end up with a few pieces that are kind of normal size, um, like this. I don't normal meaning uh, kind of like a standard full sheet of paper. This piece here is by Carolyn Gilchrist, uh, Garden Tool Study. Uh, if I go back over to the other side here of the gallery, the same thing uh, in general happened with our uh, paintings, but we do have a couple of larger paintings, and one of them. Uh, this really lovely uh, uh, yellow dominated painting called Autumn Drive uh, by Phyllis Obst. Uh, and um, this piece here is about uh, four foot by three foot. Um, but in general, the same thing sort of happened with our paintings. A lot of standard sizes, uh, uh, canvases bought at the store instead of built in our wood shop. So I just wanted to point out some of the differences that happened. Some of these other pieces we've already talked about. Uh, one thing that did stay true, and I think I have mentioned before, uh, is that a lot of artists uh, were able to uh, work with themselves as models, as uh, historically uh, um, artists have. It's something we always have, as long as we have a mirror, or nowadays a selfie camera. Um, and this is uh, William Armstrong with his lockdown hair. As I pointed out before, there were some examples of uh, some landscape. One of the things that students were able to do in the fall was get out and do some drawings live in the world. Uh, this one here uh, is by William Armstrong, also called Carrywood View. We don't think we've talked yet about the ceramics on view. Um, Ceramic, oops, give me one second. There we go. Uh, the ceramics were an interesting challenge this year uh, as we had to teach the ceramics uh, online for the first term, uh, which meant a lot of the work was done in sketchbooks uh, and planning, or if the students were lucky, um, fired at home. Uh, in their home kilns, but not everyone had that access. So some of these pieces are done in the second term when we had access to the studios. So this piece here, um, you can see three of these pieces uh, are, are boxes. Uh, they all have lids that are removed and they're made uh, using a uh, plaster, uh, a plaster mold that you can make. You can see each one of these sides has a certain pattern. Uh, and then they're castable, and you can uh, make multiples. So this piece here is by Sheena McNiff Wolf. Uh, it's called the Barney Stone Lidded Container. Up here we have uh, Carrie Trons with the Mad Catter, and then 
um, down here you can see another Keratron's uh, the color of white, which has some different white glazes on it. There were also a lot of uh, topical pieces um, or seemingly topical pieces. Uh, this piece here looks like it could be about uh, vaccines. I'm not sure that it is, but this piece here is by Kat Bannister and it's called Blood Type. back over here. This piece here is by Lucas Dreary called The Depths. And then here is another uh, topical image and uh, you can see me in the reflection. Uh, this is by Kelsey Robinson. This is called Disregarded. It's pretty uh, on point for what we're going to be experiencing for the next little while. In this corner here we have a uh, interesting uh, watercolor, uh, which I think was done in maybe in a drawing class, uh, by Aiden Fox called Collection of Thoughts. And then here is another uh, piece by William Armstrong called Crash Surveyor. Here's another example of a small, delicate, um, very detailed piece. If I get up close, you might be able to see some of the lovely um, mark making uh, and tonal qualities uh, of the piece. This piece here is by uh, Casey Dolan called Gentle Hands. couple other smaller works I'll talk about over here. If I just get this to rotate. Oops. Excuse me. There we go. One thing that uh, many a uh, few students tried this year as part of their drawing class was some uh, micron pan pointillism. Let's see how close I can get here. You can see the fine detailed work. I really love that this piece has this uh, tonal scale at the bottom. It's a kind of practice strip. Uh, this piece is called Pinecone and it's by Kat Bannister. And one of the interesting challenges that some students have uh, in their 2D digital strategies class was making um, prints, monoprints and woodcut prints and other type of prints, silk screens at home uh, on, uh, on mulberry paper. This piece here is Bethany Miller's Paradise. This piece here is a, a painting on fabric by uh, Colby uh, Barkholtz uh, called Reach. And I wanted to show this other, uh, this other pointillism uh, dot drawing. You can see the fine quality of the dots here. And then if we zoom out, um, it's called Stone Frog. It's by Kelsey Robinson. And below it, we have some Beautiful Bones by Cat Bannister. Some more landscape painting. I think I talked about this one before, but this is William Armstrong's The Green Onion. Uh, one thing that also some students managed to make work for them um, was an actual uh, collaborative piece. Uh, some of the students set up an easel uh, in, the gal in the studio and uh, invited everyone to come in on their own, socially distanced, um, and paint. Uh, and add to the piece as it went. So this piece here is by Lucas Dreary, William Armstrong, Rebecca Ayer, and Aidan Fox. And it's called Temporary, Embracing Imperfection. And you can see all the different mark making and different techniques that people have uh, uh, individually tried. And uh, as they do, the piece kind of becomes a conglomerate of all the different mark making layers. Turned out pretty good. see what do I have over oops we, we also did this um, we didn't talk about this last time we were on um, but I won't uh, I'll just let it go here for a second but uh, a lot of people weren't able to uh, submit works um, in person um, or uh, uh, just because of distance or whatever other reason so we did allow students to submit digital works uh, digital images uh, and um, we included them on this on this TV that would kind of uh, continue to play throughout the day for those who were able to get to the museum. 
Um, so we have a lot of ceramics works, drawings, paintings of all different uh, sizes, and uh, then people uh, uh, will get uh, people who weren't able to come to Red Deer, as we did have some people uh, stay stay uh, far Saskatchewan, Edmonton, Calgary, uh, to take their studies online. Here's another piece by Aiden Fox, and one by Destiny Miller. And I think I'll come back here, show a couple more ceramic pieces. This piece um, in the front, it's a little bit dark in this light, but it's by Aiden Fox, and it's, a, uh, it's an anthropomorphic vessel, which is one of the projects that the students did um, um, this year. And in the front uh, left here is, a, is a Kristen Sandberg's owl, uh, carved in soapstone. Uh, in the back corner here, oops, is a lovely bronze piece. This piece here, excuse me, there we go, uh, is uh, cast in bronze after um, being made in paper and then cast in wax. Uh, and it's by Kelsey Robinson called Float. Here's a very nice, uh, another um, slab built box um, using a plaster mold technique. Uh, this is by Sheena McNiff. Wolf, uh, it's called Cathedral. The wire piece in the front here uh, is by Jade, uh, Jade Baumgartner and is a, uh, a wire study of a skull. And then one last piece on the, or I guess there's two more pieces on this plinth, uh, is uh, Anna Thompson, Part of a Village, made in ceramics. And one more Carrie Trones piece, an old crock, it's called. And it comes with a uh, pieces, uh, the, the extra little bowl here, and spoon. So um, I want to thank you, everyone, for uh, coming to see. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to talk about every single piece. Um, I will go down this last wall here. Uh, this is uh, another William Lake, or William Armstrong uh, piece. And we have a Raven uh, Golka. Uh, it's a woodcut done with a laser cutter on plywood. So thank everyone. Thank you everyone for joining us or watching this video. Um, I'll come over here and uh, end on a piece on this wall here. Um, it's unfortunate that the timing of the event allow, didn't allow everyone to come in uh, and see the work uh, the way we would. But uh, there will be another couple of videos going out uh, tomorrow um, or the next, or, yeah, tomorrow um, to kind of uh, celebrate the end of the exhibition, focusing on uh, some of the pieces we didn't get to cover today. So there'll be one more video by Marnie Blair and one more by myself. Uh, we'll end on this piece here uh, by Kat Bannister called uh, Neon God, which is uh, an acrylic on canvas. And uh, zoom in here so you can see some of the brushwork in the background and then some of the detail work in the front. So thank you everyone for uh, joining. Um, I appreciate it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, we'll do our best. And uh, if there's any particular work you're interested in, uh, feel free also to contact us and maybe we can put you in touch with the artist if you have questions. Uh, thanks from uh, Red Deer College and the museum, Red Deer Museum and Art Gallery.